<laughs> Bless you. Nearly 5% of our world's population suffers acutely from allergies. Better known as hay fever, allergic rhinitis is a form of pollen allergy that leaves more than 400 million people itching, wiping, sneezing, and rubbing for weeks on end. 400 million people. That's a lot. And these are just the people who are experiencing the symptoms. There's an extra 40% of the world that is highly sensitive and can easily develop this allergy, but is likely just unaware of it. However, with pollen seasons getting longer and stronger, that number might actually change soon. Allergic reactions and cases of pollen allergies have definitely surged in recent years, taking merely two decades to double in its occurrence. And while overall, climate change is surely responsible for allergy seasons becoming worse. Something is happening this year that can potentially make even the unsneezable sneeze. What is El Nino? About 400 years ago, Spanish-speaking fishermen off the coast of Peru started noticing an interesting change in the Pacific Ocean. Every so often, within a gap of about seven years, these fishermen would notice that the coastal waters would get warmer than usual in the month of December. Back then, they called this El Nino de Navidad, the child of Christmas alluding to Jesus Christ. Today, we know it as El Nino. What the fishermen didn't realize then was that this wasn't just an isolated pattern. Throughout history, El Nino has had far-reaching effects not only on sea temperatures, but on the biodiversity, economy, and the socio-political fabric of the world. So, what is El Nino? Let's break it down. To put it very simply, El Nino is declared when surface sea temperatures in the tropical Pacific Ocean become very high. Its counterpart, La Nina, is the cold phase of this phenomenon. Between El Nino and La Nina, there is a state defined by average temperatures known as the neutral state. A good way to visualize El Nino is to start by thinking of a pendulum. The mean position is the ocean's neutral state, and the two extremes can be thought of as El Nino and La Nina. Together, they make ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation System. Told you, that pendulum would come in handy. But wait, there's something called Southern Oscillation? You see, what was discovered much, much later was that El Nino and La Nina are not just oceanic phenomena. They're also very closely connected to the atmosphere. This is the Pacific Ocean, the world's largest ocean and the setting for our story to unfold. In Enso's neutral state, the waters in the west equatorial Pacific, which is somewhere near Indonesia and the Philippines, are warm. Now when the water warms up, it lowers the air pressure above it. This causes the moisture-heavy air to rise rapidly. Basic evaporation follows, and the hot air condenses into big rain clouds that ultimately lead to a lot of rainfall in the area. So far, it's just the basic water cycle. But once these clouds are all drained, the now cooler air travels eastward towards South America, and just as heat lowered the air pressure before, the cold now increases the air pressure in the East Pacific. What we have now is a pressure system, with high pressure in the east and low pressure in the west. Air travels from higher to lower pressure environments. This pressure system causes trade winds to flow back from the East Pacific to the west, thus forming a continuous cycle, just like an oscillation. The trade winds carry more of the western water to the east, and to balance that, the colder, deep sea waters near South America also come up to the surface. This is all that happens normally in ENSO's neutral state. When there's an El Nino condition, these trade winds that we talked about become weak, or in some cases, start blowing in the opposite direction, and that completely reverses the effects of the neutral state. With that comes some pretty absurd weather conditions. During El Nino, Eastern Pacific countries like Peru, Ecuador, and Chile start experiencing extreme rainfall and flash floods, whereas Western Pacific countries like Australia and parts of Southeast Asia face drought-like scenarios. More than that, because of its atmospheric consequences, it causes absurd weather events all over the world. This is a map that shows Nino's impact across the world. How is it affecting your region? A typical El Nino occurs once about every seven years and lasts nine to 12 months. And El Nino is also usually followed by La Nina. The question is, 
If it's just a natural process of the Earth, what does it have to do with pollen seasons getting worse? In 1998, three researchers were studying mold concentrations in New England, USA, and correlating them with ENSO. What they saw was a clear increase in the number of clinical cases of asthma, hay fever, and sinusitis in the April-June period. What they also inferred was that mold levels peaked two, three months earlier than they did in the previous year in 1997. Pollen counts, too, were higher and peaked earlier for most tree pollen types. Why was this? Well, as it turns out, the 1997 to 1998 season saw one of the strongest El Niños ever recorded in history. Of course, this is just one example of ENSO affecting allergies, but there's enough reason to believe that with upcoming El Niños and La Niñas becoming hotter and crazier, pollen allergies are only going to get wilder. It's clear and pretty well established at this point that climate change has drastically impacted pollen seasons across many species. El Niño's franticness, however, has only added fuel to the fire. To understand that, let's look at pollen's behavior for a second. As mentioned before, El Niño leads to uncharacteristic rainfall, humidity, and weather patterns in many parts of the world. What happens is that the root systems of the plants become super primed and pollen is released earlier than usual. More rainfall also splits one pollen grain into many pieces, making its attack even stronger. Something even more interesting happens on a chemical level. You see, what causes our allergies is not the poor pollen grain, but the protein that's inside it. This protein can become more potent under certain weather conditions. If the conditions are right, the plant can release this protein when it's at its strongest. And when this happens, the allergies that it will cause will naturally be intense. And even folks who typically fare well during pollen season could likely turn into sneezatrons. El Nino also makes plants pollinate earlier and faster. Some plants remain dormant during cold winters until warmer weather arrives, much like a lot of humans. However, because El Nino causes warmer winters in some latitudes, trees, grasses, and flowers bloom and release pollen earlier. Because of this, elm trees, known to trigger allergies in many people, begin pollinating in various parts of the United States two to three weeks earlier. Following suit, allergy-causing cedar and cottonwood trees also start spraying their seeds sooner. And it's not just about the allergies because of worsening climate change, frequent forest fires, and longer pollen seasons, Respiratory diseases are now on a steep rise. And while we're talking about El Nino, let's not forget La Nina. In countries like Australia, which, by the way, is a country with one of the largest number of people who suffer from allergies, it is La Nina that creates wetter conditions instead of El Nino. Because of this, the government often releases pollen warnings and guidelines in the season following a La Nina. It's often been said that no two El Ninos or La Ninas are the same. Each state brings anomalies and a level of unpredictability. So what will 2023 bring? This year, El Nino is expected to make a much stronger impact than it did seven years ago, thanks to climate change. Even if you witness a weak influence during the summer, a more profound impact could start in the late fall through spring. 2016 was the warmest year on record due to the double trouble brought by El Nino and warming due to greenhouse gases. Since then, believe it or not, the state of the climate has only gotten worse. With El Nino now declared in 2023, the world should start bracing for its impact. While it may provide relief in areas affected by the last few years of La Nina, it can also potentially trigger more intense encore of extreme weather and climate events. Getting back to allergies, yours will most likely level up. You can expect your sneezing to increase and symptoms to possibly get worse. And even those who have escaped the attack of the allergy season till now should be cautious and aware of local pollen counts. So in short, you can definitely expect to oscillate between medicines and your handkerchief. What do you think about the worsening pollen seasons? How is your area experiencing it? Let us know in the comments below. We've linked a bunch of suggested reading in the description for this video if you're more interested in the topic. And don't forget to follow along with us as we explore the various ways our climate and environment change in the coming years. Until next time.